Hello everyone, this is um, Jerome Wright again, and you're joining me on my Jeronification channel um, here on YouTube. Alright, um, yeah, I'm back at it. I said I'm going to give up on doing these videos about Jesus and all because I don't get too many hits on them, but, you know, since my, um, my, um, my viewing stats are pretty much up and I, and I got a, a I'm up into about, I think, near 100 and a half subscribers or something like that there. But I think about 100 and a quarter sub subscribers. I'm going to go back into showing you guys what's going on here with these Renaissance artworks. And so much as far as dealing with um, Jesus and and um, um, ancient biblical times and ancient biblical texts. Because if you can understand this, then you understand the ancient biblical text that is actually out there that relates to this. Okay, and um, it's my position through my paranormal experience and encounter, which is which is an actual thing that I'm actually it's ongoing with me, and um, it's my position is that I'm able to read these artworks, and in doing so, I can show you the multi-dimensional messages and underlying messages that are actually being relayed to you here, and you don't even see them; they're not even in your face, and I mean until I actually show them what's going on okay um i i admit that renaissance artwork and ancient ancient artworks of our world are all, i mean they're impressive but they don't make no damn sense on face they don't make no damn sense people but when you see the underlining messages you go ah all of a sudden everything makes sense all right I want to go right to, um, first of all, you see this here, what's being happening here. I'm going to show you something about this, first of all. I'm going to go right to this, this object, this stone object. See this tree sticking out of that object, that stone object. This is a penis. This is where the testicles will be. This is the shaft of the penis here. This is where the foreskin of the, of the penis will be right there. This is the head. And this here is an insinuendo of semen coming out of the penis. And J Jesus being bridged over. Um, well, G these figures here being bridged over the semen shown drop down into Jesus there. Okay? And this is what this is all about. But you can't actually see what's actually being, what's being stated here. Now, I'm going to give you first the message from up here. Because I know what angels and I know what aliens are. They are identical um, to each other. I know what aliens and angels are. I haven't actually came out and said it yet, but I actually know what they are. Alright? But look at this Look at this for a minute here, people. You do not absolutely see anything. But really, does this make any sense to you? Look at it. Now, I done told you that this is a penis. The testicles are up here. This is the shaft of the penis. This is the foreskin. Now, that object appears... And another one, is, oh, this is actually the, um, the painting of, I'm sorry, of um, Giotto di Bardone. And he was born in 1267, people, 1267. And he died in 1337. So that brings him before Leonardo da Vinci and all of the rest of it. This is his name right there. Giotto di Bardone, if you guys want to Google these images. 1267 to 1367, and these pictures are courtesy of W.W. Giordano Giordano. Here, this is where I downloaded them from. Here's the the website where you can actually get that from. Okay, now it's my position that this is a penis. Okay. Here's another one of Gerardo's paintings where the penis is more shown here. There's the testicles, there's the shaft of the penis, there's the foreskin, and it actually has the red head coming out of the penis right there. You see those little legs right there over top of the penis being bridged over until you realize, you know what the cross means? The cross referencing of mankind's genetics. That's what the cross means, people. Now, 
there's someone else. I'm going to bring you to date now. This is from 12th. This is from the 12th to 13th century that Giordano made this painting. I'm going to show you somewhere else where a person capitalizes off this. There's another image too. Um, um, when you Google devil images, and it has the ape up there, and the ape with the um, 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 eating people, or as shown eating people. There's this penis images is in there as well too. It's almost like a hammer with a a um, a handle on it. To be told, that's what it actually looks like. But I'm going to show you somebody else that used it in a, in, a, in a much later time. Surrealist artist Salvador Dali. See the penis there? Look, people, the same exact object. Look. That is there. Right there. But it looks more so like this one right here. There it is. Identical. You see that? There's the box like area that creates the testicles. There's the box like area that creates the testicles. There's the shaft. There's the shaft, and notice the legs here, notice the legs here. Now, I related this to another Renaissance artist that actually copied, um, that Salvador Dali copied off of, but this is another image that I found Giordano's painting that comes before that. So that means that the artwork that I compare Salvador Dali's, this artwork to, in a previous video, is copied off of this because this came earlier before the other image that I showed you that Salvador, copied, Salvador Dali copied off of and this came before so that means that the artist that I compared Salvador Dali's artwork originally to they both are copiers of Diodones or whatever his damn name is Biodone, oh, let me see um, Badones, D. Badones um, artwork because this came from the 12th and the 13th century. Now I'm going to show you something about this, what Salvador Dali is stating. Salvi Salvador Dali is stating through a, gen through a sequence of genetic bridgings, the penis bridged over, this is a confession box, Roman Catholics, confession box right there, Salvador Dali's artwork people. And through a genetic bridging and sequence, splicing, this represents a knife, those genes were spliced. Which genes are we talking about? African Americans, blacks, apes, the founding genes of mankind genetically spliced over. And this is what Salvador Dali is stating. And if you look down into the rocks over here, and while there is cut out, you'll see the indication of that, of Africans being made, apes being made. And this is what this is all about. Now, now that I have your attention, I'm going to go back to diadones, okay, and this penis, okay, because this penis is actually linked to other things. I'm going to now just the same way that I read this here. Look, he doesn't have the cross there, but it's my position that that the cross means the cross referencing of mankind's genetics. Salvador Dali has the knife, which is actually used in ancient. Egyptian encryptions, ancient Peruvian, ancient Mayan, and ancient um, Anunnaki, Sumerian. The knife is actually utilized to state that there was a splicing. So, we have a penis. We have the origins of the genes that were um, where they got from, where they, where they originated. It says spliced over. And then here's the splicing tool, and here's the new genetics that shown that was created. And Salvador Dali is boastfully stating in all of his artwork that he contributed genetically to and, and, and sacrificed his body with, along with, with the help of the Vatican, Roman Catholics, which he had made several trips to the Vatican people. You have to actually Google all of this information. And he shows where he genetically cont um, contaminated continents, okay? And it shows Africa as being one of them, and I can prove it, okay? So, here we have it, the penis.
You see the feet? You see the splicing tool. And the artwork of Diadona, um, Gigatti, he uses the, cro um, the cross. And the cross has the feet on it. But see, notice the feet, the hands, and all of that. Salvador Dali comes along with his surrealist art form and shows you almost the same exact thing, how genetics are being altered through that of mankind and the culprits. Salvador Dali candidly paints out right here and throughout the confession box. Now, I'm going to take you two back to Diadon's um, painting. Okay? And where are we at here with this? We have it there. Let me show you some of the highlights that are actually being... What highlights do I have there? That's Jesus laying down. Okay. Now, I have to show you something about this. Uh, where is that? Okay, here we go here. You don't see it. Let me take you up here. Let me read this to you. I'm going to make that. I'm trying to move along kind of quick, too, because this, you can't see it, people. But this is through my multidimensional sense of awareness and my multidimensional sense of vision. I see creatures. I'm going to show you the, the transparent images of this creature. Look at this dolphin-like creature right here. There's the mouth. There's the snout. There's the nose. Shown merging down at this penis. There's the teeth in the mouth. And then here's the lip area here. And there's like an eye right there facing down at the tip of this penis, which is here that I identified. <laughs> that dolphin is an extension of a greater picture. There's actually a whale there. There's dinosaurs there. And pre other prehistoric creatures. But more so interesting, I'm going to draw your attention to this guy right here. You see that shadow right here, people? You know what that is? That's a megalodon shark. A megalodon shark. Let me show you what it looks like with my highlights. Then there's prehistoric creatures here. Two-headed prehistoric creature here, which is a reptilian. Okay. Then it shows us over here where the reptilian's head is back with, it's actually coupled with that of a um, a land creature, which is more so like a duck-billed dinosaur. Okay, and then you have this creature coming down. Let me show you what it looks like in highlights. When you Google Diadon's image, and I think if this is not the last judgment. I forget what this is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be bringing the last judgment up. But his artworks, this will come up when you Google his name. Let me show you what this, what this looks like. I'm going to come in closer here to give you a picture of everything that I see. Look at this, people. Look at the melting lips. There's the, the, the teeth. Look at the lips on this creature. Um, where's my pen at? The, I actually dropped my pen, so let me use this pen. Look at the gills over the eye. Here's the eye right in there. There's the top of the head. This is the bottom. And this is the defining features of this creature, uh, people. There's the lips. You see these lines? When you Google the image, look. And then here's the duck, um, duck bill like dinosaur creature. Now check this out. If it comes down, even has the bill of this creature coming across. And as we know, the ducks, like the mallard ducks, the whole foot and nostril and all of that stuff. All of that stuff is there. And look how this comes around, circles back around, the discolorations in the paint. And it shows you how that creature is compiled, like a spinoff of this reptilian-like creature. You see that, though? And it shows you that abridging from that a gene was created, which subsequently calls for the, um, the, um, the genetic becoming of man. Now check out the lips and all of that. Now this is a two-headed creature. Now it shares the same eye. Now let me let me show you where I don't know if you can actually let me see if I can turn that up so you can get a, a better look at the eye of this creature. Did that, did that give you a better picture there, people? Now check this out. Now where the eye is. Hold on. I'm gonna try to keep this rolling so I can get this video up in here. Where the eye is in here. The eye creates the illusion, or multidimensional illusion, where this creature facing off in this direction and this creature off in that. They share the same eye and the same head. Shows you the two creatures that actually, the originating creatures that cause for us. Now check this out. Now let's go over here to the great white, or the megalodon shark. Oh, I have my hand actually covering it. 
because I'm going to go into detail with this. Because when you Google this image, this guy's image, these are number one images for him. Now, I'm going to go in and you follow me on this. The shark's mouth. Let's go to the shark's mouth. When you Google this image, pan in over here. And you will see separating lines for the tooth. The nose of the shark. The lines that create the bends in the nose of the shark. I mean defining lines that shows you the, the, the flexibility of that creature's nose area and the skin area and the mouth area. You know how the, the lines are along the shark's body, almost like you see right here. Um, here on this guy here uh, on the, in the clothing, the same design, defining features. Even at the mouth, if you notice, this angel is protruding, shown coming out of the mouth of the shark. Okay, even here, here's the bottom line there with the, the gills up underneath the mouth area of the shark, under the neck area, even have the gill lines of this creature. The mouth line shows the mouth open and, sh and, and definitely shows you that that angel is being carried along through or emerged from the mouth of that creature. Now, there are only two places. And there's the eye of the shark right there, too, people, by the way. So when you Google this image, this defining feature, I'm going to tell you right now that you will see, now that the highlighted mouth of the shark, well, I highlighted it for you, but when you Google the image, those, these lines, these defining lines, the nose that creates the nose, the open mouth, and this angel exiting the mouth of the shark, people, I've seen that for the first time in my life. And how I know that image anywhere, and how I can actually show it to you from anywhere, is that image I, I've seen a couple times. And both of them took me back to the original place where, man, where I discovered mankind was created. I believe it's the Isis Temple was where I first saw that image, the Grand Canyon. You see that, the Isis Temple right there? It's my position that this is a temple, for real. Not no fake stuff. This is a real temple. The seashell-like thing on the top there. It's my position that these were stairwells that slid away over time. Even shows you the squared pattern from where they slid away. And there are um, um, multi-dimensional sculptings, patterns, that show you that there were um, um, carvings there on these on these two temples here at the Grand Canyon. But I'm going to bring you in my highlights because I have it online. You can go to my Grand Canyon discovery. There's a face there. I added the hair and all I did, could, but you can see the eye there. I'm at the right eye, the left eye, the nose, the mouth, but more so here's the shark down here. I'm going to bring up what I highlighted to cut through the chase. I don't want to get carried away on this. Here's an up close and my highlights of what is actually there. I'm going to take you over here since I showed you the stairwell too of the Grand Canyon. There's the stairwell. I highlighted the stairs. That she shell like um, um, figure up on top there. The uh, guy here. But anyway, let's go to the shark because I don't want to get. And this is the Isis temple. If you Google this image and pan in, I guarantee you, without. Look, I didn't even highlight or accent none of this. You will see the eyes, the eyebrows, the nose. Um, this is the right eye. This is the left eye. The only thing that's missing was this hair that I added. I added this black hair in. This piece has eroded off the Grand Canyon, but when you Google the Isis Temple, or this this image, which I actually um, identified wrong as the Brahmaster Zoroaster Temple, just Google temples at the Grand Canyon, and when you download and look into here, you will see this. But however, in the carvings, there is a megalodon shark down here, discolored just like this, and it has legs, showing where this creature evolved out of the ocean onto land. Here's another creature shown coming up to this being, which is shown at the Grand Canyon. And it shows you how through this creature came this creature and came then the likenesses of man, which was it's dating through eight. Okay, and I have to complete process, people, because through my paranormal experience and encounter, I have been privileged to understand how we emerge from the oceanic waters of our planet. Now, the second place that I've seen that image is here if you google photo of grand canyon banner 
photo of Grand Canyon National Park banner. Photo. Just photo. Google photo of Grand Canyon National Park banner. Right here. Enlarge this image. And you will see cherubs. God's messengers. That's right. There's an image of God there too, but I won't go into that. The identical thing that is here is over here on this side. And this is called my this is my discovery, which I have dubbed as this being the gateway to God's kingdom. Okay, and back here I believe is the Zoroaster Temple, and there's something that I found on top of that as well, too, way back here. It's my position that this entire canyon wall, which is the Vishnu portion, which has supposedly been carved some 1.7 million years ago, is not actually what that is because there's a glyph similar, well, no, not, not similar to the Egyptian glyph because this is nothing like that. It's all inscriptions alongside of the canyon wall that are readable like a grail. And it shows you who's your um, evolutionary ancestors are. It shows you the faces of them. So, what is there? Here's an enlargement of that. There's the two cherubs. There's the chin. There's the mouth. There's the cheek. There's the cheek over there. There's the nose. There's the right eye. There's the left eye. There's the forehead. And here's the hair. And then there's the other one right there. Okay? And it has a rod coming up the middle. It's a symbolization. What's more importantly about this is that these are the bodies of megalodon sharks right here that I'm going off the bat that creates these angels wings right there and there's the open mouth of megalodon sharks to show you that these angelic like figures which has no business doing in the Grand Canyon this ain't no Photoshop people this is the real deal carved on the side of the mountain it's through erosion now but archived images will show you through tourists through government, this is actually a government um, um, photo that I pulled up there at first, too, by the way. When you Google that, this is on a government um, website, okay, photo of the Grand Canyon National Park banner, okay, this image will come up. So, we also have tourists and ancient archive images that are of this location that will show us the same exact thing. So, it's not just one picture identifying this, it's now that I've discovered and highlighted the symmetry in uh, these images in the rocks that this can now be identified and associated with what I what I just discussed it being that of the gateway to God's kingdom. Okay, it's my position that all life forms emerge from that location in um in um in um in North America. There, okay, through the the oceanic waters and through a a process that it, it was an orderly process that calls for mankind's creation. Okay, so therefore, here's the shark. Angels coming out. Okay, now, aliens. If what I'm stating is true, that mankind emerged from this creature, which is that of the megalodon shark, here's our gill man creature. All we have to do is turn it over, and the angels becomes aliens slash reptilians. There's the gill on the top of the reptilian's head. There's the reptilian forehead. There's the reptilian right eye. There's the reptilian left eye. There's the reptilian mouth of that creature. There's the nose area. Here's the reptilian's chin. Here's the reptilian um, neck. And there is his collarbone, which is also dubbed as the hair of the angelic-like figures on the other side. Now, again, on this, on this side, the same exact thing. A twin from... These girls, which you are very familiar with, because most of us have them either in, in ancient biblical um, pictures that are on our walls or in the Bible or whatever, we have these, these images. We're, no one can never deny these two images of these two twin females. I'm showing you that they came from that of uh, the megalodon shark, which is here. Instead of them donning their wings, there is a megalodon shark. And down below here, people, is the Colorado, Colorado River from where these beings evolved. Now, the third place that I've seen this, and I made a video of this just recently, is McLaurin's and Ryan Lewis video, You Can't Hold Us. And it's featuring Ryan, Ryan Dalter. It's in a music video. I was upset. I was angry. Because here, this joker is jumping out of a window, crowd surfing. There's a crowd about, maybe about 12, 
uh, 10 to 12 feet below that catches him when he jumps out of the window. On either side is a poster of a shark with a woman image facing in either direction on it. The McClure's video, McLemore's video, the entire video has a message that is equivalent to what is almost being stated here. It's a cult-like message that shows how mankind's genetics were genetically bridged over from their originating source, new genes created, and then contaminating genes sent back out to contaminate the genes that, um, that had been altered. It's a contamination process, almost like AIDS. And that's what this is all stating. This entire video is stating the same exact thing as is these ancient Renaissance artworks pertaining to that of Jesus. It's the same exact thing. Shows how from our originating ancestors, new genes were created and bridged over, which calls for other likenesses that were bridged over from, think about it people, from our blackest of ape ancestor through to our blackest of African ancestor and then through throughout the Asian world and all of that on the continent of Africa. How these genes or how the likenesses of mankind started to change, skin pigmentations became lighter and then subsequently we have our Caucasian counterparts now showing us that they are furthering this process and doing something else and this is what this is all about. Genetic manipulation and contamination of mankind's genes through a maintenance process that include cult-like rituals, which include homosexual, lesbian and acts, and everything that you cannot even possibly imagine to change and alter their originating gene from that of which they are to further them and distance themselves from their ape-like ancestors. This McClure, um, McLemore video. See the shark on the other side? Look at the woman in the mouth. Here in twelfth in the in the twelfth century, people, in the, between the twelfth, I don't know when what's the date is on this. In the twelfth and thirteenth century. Here's the where's that great white shark? I want to get that great white shark up there for you. Oh, right here. Look at the great white shark, people. The nose. Let me let me bring this in for you so you can get so you can get look at this people. Look at the defining features of the mouth being open, the tooth in the mouth, the wrinkles in the nose line of that of what we would expect from a shark. The eye. Look at the discolorations in the paint to create this creature. And this dark whole darkened area creates the head portion and somewhat of a neckline of this creature. Now People, if you're not, and then underneath the mouth, you will see these, the gills of light that creates all of these defining features of this creature. Even in the Macklemore video, they capture the shark, the ape image, right there. In the shark, they use the same eye. There's the little alien-like guy right there. The black alien right there. The hands coming out. And then shows you the likeness of man. Shows you that through the megalodon shark came the ape. Then came black man. Shows that little alien as black man. And then through that are Caucasian counterparts. Which shows an image of this female, this white female here. One, two three, four, but there's also somebody else that I didn't mention in the other videos there, the mother of creation, the witch-like woman, that always ac appear next to the ape-like image of the black man. There's a witch-like woman, there's her chin, her lips, her nose, and her eye. Google the image, or not, well you don't have, or play the video, stop the video, and look at these images that I highlight there for you. That's all you have to do. Multi-dimensional images. One, two, three, four, five. All of them can be linked to this. Oh, what in the world is going on here? Uh. Yeah, hello? Hey, listen, I'm tied up. I'm going to have to call you back. I'm in the middle of making a video. I promise to call you right back. Yep. All right.
the main important thing about all of this is that this which is in the Grand Canyon which is not even supposed to be there came before all of this stuff came before Giotto's 13th century um, 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 image paintings and came before Black Malors but yet I can link all of these things to an original source which makes this all beautiful through my paranormal experience and encounter. Now, I'm going to go back to this guy. Because everybody loves Jesus and loves religion. Now that we established that that is a penis, because I'm going to go to another one of um, uh, that phone call I just took, actually took me out of my presentation here. Uh, let me see here. Let me see. Let me see where we are. Oh. These creatures, you know what this is? This is a showing. Look at this as being upside down. Look at this as being our ocean. And it's showing you through the creatures of the ocean which emerged onto land. You see these? You see this right here, people? Look at this as the ocean. This blue part is the ocean. And all through a process of genetic creation through our oceanic waters shows creatures emerging down and finally becoming that of mankind. That's what this is all about. This is the same message, people. Through my discovery of the Grand Canyon, In this ancient temple, this is a ruin of a temple. This is the same exact message that is stating through our oceanic waters, creatures contributed, our ancestors that contributed to subsequently call for the likenesses of mankind. Now, let's go to this. That shark, um, where's my highlighted image of this? That shark. And this dolphin-like creature, you see that dolphin-like creature right here? You see these genes and these genetics are all were created? Let me show you something here, people. You see that shark right there? As I told you, you can Google it and look too. Look for Giotto's paintings, okay? Go here. Shows you that this woman is bridged over. Right here in her hair right here, showing you that she's carrying the, the strong presence of our black ancestors' gene. You know how I know that? It's because in her hair, you will see a face of a monkey. Right there. You will see the discolorations that creates the monkeys, the, 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 the mouth of the ape area, there's the mouth, there's the chin, there's the eye. And then always coupled with the, with the ape is the mother of creation. On the back of this woman's hair you'll see a witch-like woman. There's her chin, there's her mouth, there's her nose, and there's her eyes. Shows you like a double-headed penis. Which brings me to another image. Which tells me the same exact thing. What's being stated here, with this woman's head showing you that she's bridged over, you see that? Is the same thing that is shown with this symbolization this Indian like symbolization here where this object comes over and you see the penis like heads on either end right there and then it shows you this hook coming down meaning the blood shown going back around you see the apes like face there and the coach goes back and hook back in genetic bridging people every ancestor on this planet ancient ancestor knew how mankind was created and it's amazing that this artwork now the Renaissance I know the Renaissance area I don't know if this is considered the Renaissance area back in the 12th century but people all our ancient worlds our, our world's ancient artwork was oversaw by the Romans and Catholics look at this look at this creature these shadowy figures. These are genetics in motion. 
Now, come over here to this woman bending over G Jesus with her hand shown like almost in a chokehold on Jesus. That shark and these genetics here and this penis that's dripping this semen, this drop of semen, look how it creates the, the uh, illusion. This is the head of the, sh this is the body of the shark in one way and then coming around the shark's tail is another creature on the end and it's showing you that these genetics were introduced to Jesus. Jesus' whole journey represents the cross contamination of himself and then a creation of new genes and genetics. Now I want to take you back to the other penis because it seems like these people loved penises back then and show you exactly what I'm talking about here. This penis, the testicles, the penis, and even has the red head on the penis. On the end of the penis, there's a face. I think that this might be the last judgment. This might be the last judgment. Shows you that this penis, again, strewing sperm, showing you, now look, this sperm, genetically contaminating three virgins, and this person extracting the genes, and these genetics are taken out. Genetic bridging. These demonic-like figures are ancient African ancestors, shown tugging away back and forth on it until they finally defeat it. It shows a genetic warfare between ancient ape and African genes and those of those that were being created. And that's what this, these messages are all about. This ain't nothing about soul, well actually it is about soul saving, but it's, it's more so genetic manipulation and, br and bridging. It's a genetic grail of who you are. Now, these shadowy figures are shadowy errors. You want to know what they are basically. You know what this is? All you have to do is turn the image and it creates your ape ancestor. You turn that image, the chin of the ape is there, you'll see the mouth separating line there for the ape. You come around over the, 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 the top lip portion of the ape, there's the ape left nostril there, there's the ape's right nostril, and then the ape has one eye there, and then the ape's forehead is right there. It shows you people the breakdown of the ape African genes across the plains to where subsequently those genes became created white. It's a breakdown of genes between white, I mean black, and white. And it's a continued process that I can show you where it's at. I can show you from, from here where it all began. And also here, the Grand Canyon National Park, on how these genes emerge from these waters, oceanic waters of our world, and how they continue across each and every continent of our planet, and who was a contributing party to alternating and I mean to altering and contaminating them from Cambodia. Angkor Wat, ancient Egypt, even ancient Africa, through each and every continent, even through the ancient biblical t on times. I don't care if it's Jesus, John the Baptist, I don't care if it's Noah, and then coming into our saints now, St. Jerome and, and all of our popes. All of these genes, people, these genetics, it's a genetic grail, and it shows you how the process was furthered and manipulated. Okay. Now, also in this, um, let me see what we have here. Do I have something else here that I want to show you? Oh, here. I'm saying, stating about the black man and all that. Look in the rocks. You will see mirrored images. Well, not mirrored images. Transparent images, almost. There's an eye, there's a nose, there's the hook of the eyelash. You see the 
the mouth and the chin. You see that, that black face there, that brown face? Showing you these bridging overs on how this guy's genes, these genetics, our ancient ancestry genetics, was broke down through a process. And I know what actually is going on here, too. But I'll keep that mum's the word on that right now for now. But I can tell you exactly what is going on here. But if you look down, down people, you can finally understand Renaissance art for what it's really worth. It's a breakdown of genes. It's just genetic ground to tell you who you genetically are. Look at this. And the farther you go back in time, these artists, this is a 12th to 13th century painting, people. And look at Jesus. What in the hell is a big white penis doing face that this angelic-like figure Encryption showing you that through her own clothing and her sleeve that this penis is spewing semen showing you a genetic exchange that began over here and who all this enlarging in life penis showing you that this th these genes created showing you an injection this is almost like a giant hypodermic needle being ejaculated into these individuals to alter the founding stones or founding core genetics of that of mankind, which originated through our oceanic creatures that contributed. What more can you ask for than that, people? And then if you look in the hair, which is a genetic indicator of who we are, and you look in here in the, in the face, you'll see the faces of the beings that you so recognize, a monkey face there, the witch-like woman is the mother of creation equal to Madonna. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it's the, the, uh, Mary, Mother Mary. All of these images, these symbolic messages, these cult-like rituals. Look at the faces, people. And then for those of you that don't want to believe that that's a penis, I just showed you in the artworks of Salvador Dali, who's, who's, a, who's a nut in my book. Then I'm going to take you to another picture of your, of, your, of your beloved Jesus. Here, where he's being kissed by John the Baptist. Now I'm going to show you something about this. Let me see if I can pull this face up for you here. Eh. It's always hard when you, you try to, to bring it in. All right. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna draw the monkey's face for you here. Let me see if I can pin this up and show you how. Always in the dark portion, they 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 show you the the presence of our African ancestor, our ape ancestor, and always showing in the form of the monkey. Um, can I draw that from there? I might have to actually. I'm gonna take this down. I'm gonna draw it because the ape is right there. Starts off showing in black. And then it shows you how it's broken down. It's in Ashley and Judas's hair right there. So I'm going to take this down and I'm going to draw that for you right quick. So I want you to look at this. Hold on. I want you to look at that for one second. Let me see if I can give you that eight. So if you Google that, that image, you'll actually see pretty much what I'm talking about. Uh-huh. And then you can see these these genes being snaked over and everything else here. Where's the other ape? Oh, okay. It shows you in Judas's hair. Even got eyes and everything. I'm gonna I'm gonna put the eyes there and show you. Nostrils, let me see. Now Okay. I'm gonna bring this image up again. Oh, first of all, it starts over here. Here's a kiss of of um of um of Judas with Jesus. Now check this out, people. Look at how these genes are broken down. Look in the hair of this individual. There's the chin of the ape. There's the mouth of the ape. There's the nostril. Then there's the eye over here, 
showing you our ape ancestors contributing to the genetic breakdown process. Well, I don't know whether they knowingly contributed or not, but that's yet to be debated. But however, there's an ape face here showing you these genes being broken down. There's an ape face there, mouth, eye, forehead, showing you the genes snaking back out. They're showing them going in both ways, but more so, look at Judas when you Google this image. And in Judas's hair, you see a breakdown of that gene to where, if you can't look, you see that face, the mouth, the eye, look. And then the soldier's cap in the background becomes the cap of that, showing you that through all of that process, now in the kiss with Jesus, shows you that gene that was broken down. And then it shows you an extraction of these genes going back out this way. And look at this guy here, shown reaching in this direction and then look showing you that the genes are bridged over and that's why the back of this guy is here hooded guy and showing you that the genes is going over and then there's a knife showing you genetic splicing just at the table of um, the last supper with um, Leonardo da Vinci where I think it is um, not um, who is that um oh gosh I, somebody's probably put the knife in the back of Judas and I forget who it is the the corporate of that is but anyway um, nevertheless it's the same insinuation as being said. The knife is not in the back of Ju And you see that the knife is not in the back of Judas here, in fact. And this is just like Leonardo da Vinci painting, but Judas is here sharing a kiss with Jesus. So why is there a knife right here in the exact area of that of where it would be at, placed at, and where Jesus is in the center at the Leonardo da Vinci's um, painting of the Last Supper, and then there's a knife stone coming around, reaching around in the back. You know what this is an insinuation of? And the same thing at the Last Supper? Genetic splicing. So splicing. That's what the knife insinuates, splicing. And that's the same thing that it means and represents at the table of that of um, Leonardo da Vinci's um, Last Supper. Showing you that Jesus is in the middle, meaning that he is crossed hold on let me get this right oh I made it upside down I guess yeah I made it upside down let me make this a little longer this is a cross I'm drawing people there's a cross okay I made it a little shabby there showing you that Jesus is crossed reference with either end, with both ends of these of these groups of people, genetic contamination on on a on a mass scale, and that's what these uh, these images are all about. If you look at these paintings for what they're worth, you will see a breakdown in these genes. You will see the monkeys, our ape ancestors, because none of these paintings can be possible without insinuating the breakdown of that gene, which began with the ape which is the blackest of creatures, and um, African, which is which are um, African people. And in some paintings, they actually even show Africans or African um, African people, descendants, in these pictures, and it shows you what's going on. But however, the cat is out of the bag when they use that. So they use insinuendos of our black ancestor without actually showing their faces because it actually identifies the genes of which they're targeting. It can be easily read. So that's why when you see me pointing out all of these likenesses of monkeys and the hair, and in here, you see that? The likenesses of monkeys. And then the breakdown is showing you the direction of these genes. That's what this is all about. I don't care who the artist is. I don't care... At what point the artist? I can do this with second century, third century catacomb images. It doesn't even it doesn't even matter. I can go before that, but and the story is always the same. These beings, which were created through a process of genetic manipulation and genetic bridging, it's a continued process, and that's why you can see an angel in the mouth of a shark or well, there's one two three angels but this angel is right there emerging from the mouth of the shark 
and then you see the cocktail of these genes, and then you look, you see them merging down, then you see a penis, then look, then look, now check out the connection, the angel coming from the mouth here of the shark, see a dolphin-like creature here, just showing you the genes in motion, in the form of semen, then look, then there's a penis, okay, bridged over, and then there's, at the end, there's an ape-like figure, encrypted in the stone, shows you a genetic manipulation of bridging between that creature, a reintervention. This is a reintervention. It's my position that every five to six hundred years, the process can be reintervened again, people. There's a lot to this, too, by the way. And this is what is shown occurring here. And showing you that this ejaculation from this penis, shown you encrypted here in her sleeve, which is discolored from the original portions of her wardrobe, showing you that now there, she's bridged over, Jesus bridged over, and a new gene was created and extracted. And then you always have this dark-like figure here, like you do in this, in this kiss, showing you that this new cocktail, this cauldron-like chemistry of genes created, picked up and carried over. Another new carrier was created. A secret carrier. Look, same thing here. Look at this person reaching in. This person wrapped around Jesus. These, there's actually a that shark-like figure is right here, shown right there. That angelic-like figure emerging from the mouth. This is what she's showing you. This is her head here. This here. You see this shark with the mouth there. This is what her clothing is insinuating right here. There's a shark on it. She's wearing a shark body on her sleeve, shown right there, and her head emerging from there. Here's a shark's tail, and it shows you a creature on there. And then look, and the genes are being now, after they then came and bridged over with Jesus, look at the genes shown right here, being extracted. Genetic contamination on a, on a mass scale requires a mass scale record. Through the penis and through blood, through our bodily fluids, all of this is possible. These contaminations, these bridgings, everything. And this is how they did it. They didn't have they didn't have the um what do we have here? They didn't do it interventionally back there, folks. They did it the old fashioned the good old fashioned way. They did sexual acts in order to get that semen and that blood up out of of the bodies. And you know how they did that? Through homosexual acts, through lesbian acts, and through acts that we don't want to believe exist, but did exist. Also, when you look at this, look at this guy right here. I'm going to draw another face. Look at this guy right here. That's where his hands are folded over. I'm going to give you another little face there. Because my, my, my witch-like woman, who I dub as the mother of creation, she's always... She's always present, and it helps me identify which genes are being referenced and which genes are being targeted. But if you look along there, here's, here's, um, here's I just drew her face in there, right there. So look right here, and you will see these genes on, on which actually is being talked about and being discussed, and you can see how they're being targeted and bridged over and it shows you the process of which it is all occurring and it creates and it begins with our pre pre prehistoric ancestors our oceanic prehistoric ancestors and it shows you this this by the way is a reintervention this is not no beginning this is the reintervention of that of our ape ancestor genes that was already created i can take us to these originating genes where they came from how they came to our world and what is and, and, and how this these these changes and these manipulations began in the first place and how these people there's a recorded history. Our ancient text is a recorded history of how these reinterventions keep reoccurring and reoccurring and reoccurring. My name is Jerome Wright. You're watching my Jeronification channel. I'm gonna end this video with that. I don't think I missed anything, but knowing me I probably did. Um I'm going to end with that, and um, and we'll stop there. And Oh, I, oh, I want to show you, too, that if you kind of sort of look right here, you'll see another face up in here.
Oh, but Madonna likes video covered over. Oh, I know what I wanted to tell you. That these references of these virgins and all of that stuff there supposedly being snakes and stuff. It's my position in our world today that the, these, these beings are being utilized in a way not in, 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 in the sense of these, these are virgins. These virgins are being referenced in the form of nuns. It's my position that the black and white wardrobes, even the gray and white wardrobes of our nuns in religion, it's a reference of these creatures. This reference that's being made right here. You see this reference? Right? Right there? With that shark, hold on, do I got that right? Or, oh, you know, I meant to tell you this, Salvador Dali has that shark figure in his um, paintings as well, too. But you see that shark? Nuns' outfits, nuns' uniforms. This is what is being implied by nuns' uniforms. The monks, I know what their uniforms is being referenced as. The religious garbs and wardrobes, I know what they're... But in this case, the nuns are implying our ancestral evolutionary departure from that of the shark and that's what that's being that's what's being implied so when you look at a nun look at it for what it is when you look at a nun look at a nun for the wardrobe that they're actually wearing it's actually implying the skin of the shark or the flesh of the shark or the body of the shark and that's what that's actually implying so this Macklemore video from beginning to end where you see that Macklemore figure taking that flag from out of the snow which represents genetics that he was received from an ancient black ancestor. You see the black old man in the beginning, uh, with the African descendant man in the beginning, hand him. He's handing him his fam, his genes, which Mac, Mac Malor takes and alters, and that's why you see people in there playing in hair and all of that, and you showing them, seeing them going from continent to continent and all of that stuff there. This is the same thing that Jesus was doing. This is is called genetic manipulation, contamination, and bridging. Look at the video if you haven't seen that video and you'll understand it better now. You'll understand the journey of Jesus better now too as well. The cross is here. The angels, these virgins, bridged over the penis. Shows you the penis, shows you the cross with legs on it. Look at the cross there people. There's a battle, a genetic battle, between white created genes and black created genes. That's why you see these beings as being white and black. While there was a battle going on, it shows you that white over king. That's why you see these legs white now. A new gene created bridged over the virgins, which I'm telling you are nuns. Shows you that these genes was given, look, through the penis. New gene created, rebridged back over through three more virgins, and now, without the blackness in it, which is is called the devil, because that's what black genes were, um, were referenced as in all Renaissance art. This person takes the genes from there. Reminds me of the um, the the video I made for Sister Charlotte, the nun that claimed that all of these things was coming on, and and how the um, the bishop came to her or the or the priest came to her, and um, made sexual advances on her. Yeah, and nobody believed her, and I did a video actually on support of that. Well, all of this is in support of that because there's a penis larger than life, right there. There's a penis with legs shows you that this penis is crossed over what in the fuck is a cross doing on a penis and for those of you that don't believe that that's a penis 
The penis even has a mouth and a face on it. This is the this is the the the, the, the skin of the penis, and we all know what an uncircumcised penis looks like. I hope anyway the red head comes out of it, and then the penis has a face telling you which gene is actually being injected, which which, which altered. It's showing you everything. Look, people. The ape's face showing you that there's a genetic holder. You might as well put a, a cocktail, a, a chemistry, a genetic altering. And now, through this altering and contamination, a new gene was created. He takes it. It's cross, look, it's called cross contamination. A cross contamination and now sent from the Roman Catholic Church to the nuns monastery this guy visits cross contaminates them and now this guy comes in the other door look this guy go in the back door Gives them, cross contaminates them, lets that gene marinate within them, and then this guy comes along and extracts it from them. Now he's kneeling. What and if the woman is right here, what is down here through an opening through their door? Their vagina, people. He's taking from them genes, genetics that now being passed off to him in the form of the way that AIDS, HIV, and all of that actually happens. My name is Jerome Wright. You're watching my Jeronification channel. And with that, people, I'm out.